My interest in photonics and quantum sciences came in a roundabout way. I was thinking a lot about the way in which light is a measure of many things. And that kind of interest led me to start creating artworks that were actually subject to time. And I think it naturally led to actually wanting to go more deeply to understand the mechanics and particularly in the realm of quantum physics now that you know the knowledge is so extraordinary. So in thinking about the fastest thing in the universe, one of the problems I'd encountered in the past was that people could not get their head around the speed of light. And I began to think, well, we need a reference scale here. Why not take as an example one of the slowest physics experiments that's out there, and also as it happens, the most boring. So I began to investigate the pitch drop experiment, which has been running since 1927 at the University of Queensland, Australia, and translate that or transpose that into a work that combines slow moving fluids with light, in this case, photoluminescent pigment. Instead, here we encounter a fluid medium flowing at a rate like water on a human scale. And this directly relates to the way in which the extreme light group are manipulating light in fluid media. So the light and flight uh, technology that we've developed relies on a very new camera technology. These cameras are based on a quantum technology that allows you to uh, photograph or make videos of actual individual photons. In the case of uh, slow light, this, this technology actually allows us for the first time to observe these pulses that are traveling in very special kinds of materials, we call them atomic vapors, uh, for example, where light behaves very strangely. It slows down to ex extremely low speeds. Being able to directly see something is, is key to then actually understanding it. And here we have the opportunity for the first time to directly see and make a video of, uh, of light being slowed down and traveling slowly in this slow light medium. So analog black holes in general, the idea behind what is called analog gravity is um, the attempt to try and recreate in the lab the same kind of conditions that you would have around a real sort of gravitational black hole, such as the one that lies at the center of our own, uh, our own galaxy. Black holes are at the center of some of the most interesting and important open questions in physics at the moment. And so you can try to answer some of those questions by recreating some of the conditions that you can find around a black hole in the lab. I started to dig into the history of that experiment, the analog black hole experiment, and discovered that you know, the first theoretical idea of the notion of this was actually as a sound an um, acoustic black hole, or a dumb hole. Having already kind of thought about sonifying that data, why not take it back into sound? When you look at the experiment, it's just a little tube. So that was one of the other kind of ideas I had, was actually to create a sound installation that's a model of that very tube and what's happening inside it. The vortex fountain that we commissioned actually was something we'd been thinking about for, for many years and we only actually got around to doing it thanks to the collaboration with, with Lily. The, the scientific interest goes back to the idea of trying to study black hole physics in the lab and it turns out that the water vortex is a very good model of a rotating uh, black hole. You can study how the ripples, how waves on the surface are modified by, by the vortex flow. So on the one hand you have something which is incredibly beautiful to look at, it's uh, mesmerizing, 
but also scientifically there's, there's great interest in understanding how waves interact uh, with the vortex, which is something that hasn't been looked at in detail before. So many people now feel disengaged from well, any kind of what we see as elite knowledge. And there are many pathways into actually understanding these ideas. And it's not about making them accessible because even people who already might be experts in the field learn new things through this process and open up you know, the mind in order to understand differently what they're doing too. I think artists and scientists are very uh, like-minded in the way they think about how things work or how they look at the world, but whereas a scientist maybe uses equations and has a, a very specific uh, uh, mindset, an artist can bring a very different way of looking, uh, looking at things. I think it's by blending these two approaches together that something new and interesting can be born.